Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how to create a DNS server. Um, and this particular DNS server configuration we're going to do is not a Microsoft based DNS server, but a server that anybody can install on any client machine. And the reason why is we're going to focus today on how to create a DNS sinkhole and why that's a better option than just straight out ad blocking. So the first thing I'm going to have you guys do is to download the actual software. And if you follow the URL, which is down in the description, um, you have a choice between a Windows install, a Linux install, a Raspberry Pi install, Docker install, or a Mac OS install. So once you have that thing downloaded and you have it installed, reboot your machine and we'll kick off the video from that point. Okay, so now that you have the actual software installed and running on your machine, and you should be able to tell that by down here in the little uh, um, taskbar, we should see the actual DNS server running, assuming you're on Windows. If not, um, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to go to the start menu and actually launch it first. Uh, so that's just going to be, well, obviously, I can't really show you on this because this is a Windows XP clone. But it's going to just be listed underneath your start menu in your traditional Windows configuration. Um, once it's running, you're going to go to localhost colon 5380 is the port. And you're going to get prompted for, to create an, uh, an admin password. So You'll have to put the password in twice, make sure you remember it or save it somewhere, and log into the console. And this is what the console should look like once you get in. Obviously, you're not going to see the traffic here. The reason why I see traffic is because this one's actually running on the system that I'm talking to you on, and every time I click on something, you'll see a change in traffic. This is a live, real-time traffic pattern, so you can actually monitor it. And if you have this installed on a secondary system and you have everything pointing to it for DNS lookups, then obviously you'll get a lot more traffic here. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on how to create a DNS sinkhole today. Okay, so why DNS sinkhole versus just using, say, like an ad blocker? Well, the reason why is because in an ad blocker configuration, your ad blocker is going to block the traffic um, completely. It's not going to allow the ad to play in the background. It's also going to likely cause certain websites to bark and complain about how you're running an ad blocker and they make money off of ads, etc. To circumvent that, you use a, a sinkhole in DNS. And the reason why is because the DNS sinkhole will actually play the video, you'll just never see it. The DNS sinkhole will show the ads are actually running, but you'll never see them actually run. In other words, you're not blocking them. The infrastructure is blocking them or the application is blocking them. And as a result, the way it looks on the other side from the actual provider is that the ad, ad played or the video played or whatever else played. So it doesn't cause that issue where you can't access certain sites. And that's why a sinkhole is a better idea. A sinkhole will also block viruses and malware and a variety of other problems that exist on the internet pop-ups, whereas your regular browser like Adblocker Plus isn't going to do that. Okay, so now that we have the software downloaded and you know the reason why, let's configure the how. So in the dashboard, we're going to click on settings and then we're going to click on blocking. I'm going to make sure that enable blocking is checked and allow the TXT blocking report. I want to make sure both of those things are set. Um, now, if you have a situation where you don't want to have this run certain times of the day or you need to test things, then you could add a... Uh, temporary disable on here or add blocking bypass list so certain websites that the ads will still play um, or that you know you, you want the ads to play because maybe you're doing testing for web development you need certain ads to play but not everything on the site that's a perfect place to add this now what we're gonna do in order to actually set up the block list is under the quick ad you're gonna have a list of different URLs that you could add here now these URLs are actual content lists which will be downloaded to the system to allow you to block certain things. And there's a lot of them in here. The one that I use specifically is the OISD Big, or the Adblock Plus list. And that's basically the same list that the Adblock Plus web browser plugin uses. And I just click on that. Once that's clicked, you'll see it appear up here into the blocked URL list. The next step you need to do is you need to hit the Update Now. Now, this is the update interval. So every 24 hours, the system will automatically update this list to make sure it has the latest block list available. Now, you could set this for less. You could set it for one hour or five hours, but it does create an additional amount of traffic on your infrastructure. So if you're trying to not have a constant stream of internet connection, then I would just leave it as 24 hours. That should be adequate for what you need it to do. Once you have that update set, you're just going to hit the save settings and the system will automatically download the block list 
and it'll then block your malware, your adult content, and a variety of other things that could cause pop-ups and annoyances on systems, as well as ads. Once you do this, you gotta make sure that your internal DNS on your actual machine is pointing to itself, which is usually the 127.0.0.1 address. This will only work if the service is running. If the service isn't running and you have it pointing to the 127.0.0.1 as your uh, lookup for your DNS, obviously your websites aren't gonna run, so you wanna make sure that this service starts with Windows when it starts up. Hopefully this is helpful, and hopefully this helps you guys um, out with your configuration of your DNS server and why it is important to use DNS sync holding versus just ad blocking. Thanks a lot guys for your time. Like and subscribe for more videos.